Colorado Republicans were in a deep hole going into last night. They're at their weakest point in state politics since before World War II. So what did they do? They grabbed shovels and they kept on digging. It's a tough spot for the party now, and it's tough to see the light from the bottom of the hole. Marshall talked with one of the few Republican winners of the night who might just be the next big thing in that party. Even I steam my shirts before work, but sometimes my story doesn't work out the way I expect, just like the end results from the Republican watch party last night. There was excitement to start. By the end, you couldn't help but watch the results with your jaw dropped. I mean, you don't have a single statewide candidate get above 45% in a state. Um, you're no longer really a party that has any chance to win. Political consultant Mario Nicholas points out what Heidi Ganahl, Joe O'Day, Pam Anderson, John Kellner, even Lang Sias for treasurer, did not attain 45% support. Because the Republican Party hasn't been putting anything forward other than bickering and fighting and, and screaming at the other side, they haven't given the people of Colorado any choice to elect them. And it's not just happening on statewide races. If current results hold, Republicans will lose ground in the state Senate and lose ground significantly in the state house with just 19 Republicans out of 65. This next year will be very eye-opening for voters. Um, I think they're going to see what what they got. State Representative elect Rose Puglisi was someone Republicans wanted to see run for statewide office this year, perhaps governor. She did not. And now she's going to be at the state house where Republicans are projected to have the lowest number of members in memory. If people were like most mad about one thing that they have seen so far, the 27 cent delivery fee was a huge issue for them. It'll be interesting to see what we can work on going forward to help alleviate um, some of those additional financial burdens on constituents throughout Colorado. But voters knew about those fees when voting more Democrats in office this year. So what can help Republicans from needing consoling hugs next time? I don't know that there's anything I could tell them that would help them to win. I don't think there's, I don't think there's winning for them in the future. Not with a map like this, for the time being at least. Uh, this is Rose Puglisi right there, the 19th House uh, Republican. The Reds, they meet tomorrow morning to pick a new House Minority Leader. Of course, as we told you, uh, House Minority Leader Hugh McKean passed away, uh, and he would have to face election with his caucus anyways. They hold a meeting tomorrow to pick their new leader, and then they have a memorial service for him. All the Blues will meet, I believe, tomorrow afternoon to do the same thing, pick a new Speaker of the House. Couldn't tell you who's going to lead either party, and that's going to dictate policy, Kyle. When Republicans were at a, such a low point a couple of years ago, we asked ourselves, who's up next for them for a high-profile race? And we said, Heidi Ganahl, you know, fairly sensible centrist Republican. And then, you know, wingo, off she went this year and lost by 17 points. And we had the same conversation today. Who in the world is next? And there was silence. Well, Rose Puglisi first says, let's let's unify the party, which was fractured within the state house last year with some extreme right and then some more moderate Republicans. Unify the party and see what we can get past. I'll be watching her for the next two years and see if she is the next rising star. Because we asked Heidi Ganahl herself that question two years yeah. ago, and then she became the candidate. Maybe policies first and let the people follow, you know, but put, put some policies out that folks like. All right, Marshall, thank you.